At our top story this hour, there has been a violent face-off at the India-China border on Monday after a violent standoff between the troops of western sector of India-China border. India has said that China departed from the consensus to respect the line of actual control in the Galwan Valley. Both sides suffered casualties that, have, that could have been avoided, says India. Now, the Indian Army has confirmed that a violent face-off has uh, taken place along the line of actual control at midnight on Monday. Three Indian Army men lost their lives in the ensuing face-off at the Galwan Valley in Ladakh. The casualties included one senior officer and two soldiers. Now, according to the Indian Army, China also suffered casualties during the escalation. Now, we are being joined by our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sudan Sibyl, live for more on the story. Good evening to you, Sudan. What are the latest details that you have for us on the story? Well, Alison, a short while ago, India's External Affairs Ministry issued a strong statement uh, saying that China unilaterally tried to change the situation on the ground at the LSC despite uh, the agreement uh, between both the Indian side and the Chinese side. Uh, the Indian side, in a strong statement, detailed the, what happened uh, overnight uh, when the when the face-off happened in which uh, the Indian Army has confirmed that it lost three of its personnel. The Indian side also said it's committed to sovereignty and called for dialogue so that uh, the situation does not deteriorate. This is an important point given the fact that India has called for dialogue amidst uh, the growing uh, escalation of uh, the border dispute between India and China. But by and large, if you look at uh, the day's development, since morning we have seen how there have been rounds of conversations happening here in Delhi and of course it was at around 12 noon here Indian Standard Time that the Indian Army first confirmed that uh, uh, the development has happened and said that there were casualties uh, both sides. In fact, both the Indian Army and the MEA has confirmed that there are casualties both sides. Even the Chinese are confirming that there are casualties, but the Chinese are not giving any details on the number of casualties, even though the Indian side has confirmed that three of its personnel have, have, have been martyred in this face of between both the countries which have happened after years because it's after years that uh, uh, something uh, this of this sort has happened when it comes to India-China relationship or at the LSA. Despite uh, the Wuhan guidance given by both the leaders after the Doklam crisis, the famous Wuhan informal summit and of course uh, the Chennai Connect summit which happened last year in which both the leaders gave uh, guidance to their soldiers, uh, to their armies that when it, it comes to the LAC given the fact that there are perceptions, different perception of the LSE, if there is a situation, both sides can sit at local level and converse. But despite the strategic guidance given by both the leaders, this uh, development has happened and this does not bore well amidst uh, uh, the COVID crisis that has been the major, major crisis across the world. Right, Sudan. And what we make of uh, China, we don't uh, have the latest update. They have been refusing uh, casualties on their side, despite the uh, statement that's been released by the Indian Ministry. Well, yes, Alison, it has uh, been a pretty long day and reactions coming from both sides. Uh, uh, the Chinese side, uh, of course, uh, we know that uh, through its uh, mouthpiece, Global Times has confirmed that there are casualties. Uh, in fact, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the army chief, uh, the, 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 the Chinese army has also confirmed that there are casualties, but they haven't confirmed the numbers. But uh, uh, if you look at the statements coming from China, they haven't been very, very positive. They have been very combative. We know China has been largely combative when it comes to the current situation, not only with the Indians, but also with the with Vietnamese, with the, the Japanese uh, and also uh, the, the Vietnamese. In fact, the Taiwanese today confirmed that uh, the Chinese uh, fighter planes crossed into their their airspace. Uh, they were, of course, driven back. But uh, uh, one can see there is an increased belligerence by the Chinese uh, amidst the COVID crisis. And it seems that uh, uh, the Chinese President Xi Jinping in, it, in an att attempt to douse the criticism uh, he is facing 
facing uh, inside the country over handling of the COVID crisis is trying to divert the attention uh, with these sorts of uh, events, in incidences, and of course this major flare-up between the Indian side and the Chinese side, which uh, the Indian side has not only confirmed but giving out, given out the details, saying that how the Chinese side has been trying to change uh, uh, the situation on the ground, the status quo on the ground unilaterally. But that has been something that comes very naturally to the Chinese. We have seen after how India removed a special status for the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir, there were strong statements by Chinese. In fact, the Chinese saying that they are part of the so-called Kashmir dispute. In fact, it was the Chinese who led uh, the diplomatic onslaught at the United Nations Security Council. Of course, India thwarted it, but largely it has been China-driven policies in uh, the region, trying to be aggressive in the region, especially when it comes to India, and of course, increasing its influence in South Asia. Right, Sidant. And as you said, this has been many years where there, there's been no issue of this kind. And this uh, violent face-off has taken place after there was a, a, a de-escalation um, the, after the massive build-up. Well, yes, Alison, uh, last week we know that there was confirmation by sources here in Delhi that there has been de-escalation at various points, but few points remain, including the Galwan Valley, where the incident has happened, where uh, the the Indian side has lost uh, the, uh, the, uh, the army personnel, and of course the Chinese side has also lost uh, their, uh, their army personnel. There is, of course, no confirmation on the numbers, but uh, if you look at uh, how China has been acting, it has been a combative China, and uh, uh, it looks like that the Wuhan spirit that emerged after uh, the famous informal Wuhan, uh, uh, for, uh, Wuhan summit uh, between the Indian side and the Chinese side has uh, has uh, uh, clearly finished. And of course, we know that in few days' time, the RIC summit is going to take place. The RIC foreign minister summit through video conference is going to take place on 22nd of uh, of June. That is approximately one week from now. The big question is: Will India's foreign minister S. Jayashankar participate in that uh, uh, video conference? Also, we know that uh, the Indian foreign minister briefed uh, talked about this uh, this. Uh, face off between uh, uh, the Indian side and the Chinese side uh, uh, to the Indian Prime Minister. Of course, this was a pre-scheduled meeting, that, but this is expected to be discussed. Uh, we also know that the Indian Defence Minister has already briefed. There are statements, but by and large, the uh, situation remains tense and uh, uh, the big question is how both sides are going to sort out the situation on the ground because now it seems it's out of the hands when it comes to the local uh, local mechanism that was devised by both sides. It's up to the political leadership, the Indian leadership and the Chinese leadership to intervene and solve the situation. So far it seems the uh, situation is going in a negative terrain unless there is uh, a direct contact between the political leadership of both the countries. So far there hasn't been any political uh, uh, intervention. Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, in fact, there hasn't been any statement right. by the Chinese president or by the Indian prime minister. But so far, uh, the, both sides are now focusing on dialogue, as right. we have heard from the statement uh, by the Indian uh, external affairs ministry. Right. And Sidant, we believe that China's foreign uh, vice foreign minister and India's ambassador are scheduled to meet soon. What can we expect from this meeting? Well, it looks like that meeting has happened. Uh, well, it is being right now termed as a meeting, but uh, usually in the current circumstances, it's called summoning. We do not know whether the Chinese envoy here is summoned or not, but uh, we already know that how the Chinese uh, were reacting since morning. In fact, the Chinese uh, foreign ministry in a statement in their daily press briefing said that they have uh, uh, made a strong protest with the Indian side regarding the developments at the LSE. But uh, uh, rest assured, the Indian side is also going to react strongly. We do expect more statements coming soon. In fact, the, the Indian Army is expected to give out a detailed statement very soon. This will be the second statement by the Indian Army and do expect the number of uh, the Indian soldiers who have died in the, this uh, this face-off to rise also because we are getting uh, confirmation now that the numbers could uh, be uh, above uh, the three number which has been given by the Indian Army uh, at around 1 p.m. Indian Standard Time today. But by and large, this is a major es escalation, escalation coming after more than 40 years and this is going to major impact relationship between New Delhi and Beijing. Both the sides were trying to engage, trying to make sure that their dis differences do not become dispute. This is a line which has been often quoted by both the leaders, uh, by both the foreign ministries, but it seems that this spirit right. is going away with each passing hour, especially uh, the grim atmosphere here in Delhi with rounds of meetings happening, uh, briefing happening uh, uh, with the defense ministry or with the prime minister. And do expect more, uh, more to the story right. as, uh, as the days and the hours pass. 
Sidan, thank you very much for that update. That's our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sidan Sibyl, bringing us the latest today. And now, this is what a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson had to say earlier. Recently, in order to ease the situation in the border areas between China and India, China and India maintained close communication through diplomatic and military channels. On June 6, the border troops of two countries held a commander-level military meeting and reached an important consensus on easing the situation in the border areas. But what is shocking is that on June 15, the Indian troops seriously violated the consensus of the two sides. They crossed the border illegally twice and carried out provocative attacks on Chinese personnel, resulting in serious physical conflicts between the two border forces. China has lodged strong protests and solemn complaints with the Indian side and once again solemnly demands that the Indian side strictly restrain the frontline troops in accordance with the relevant spirit. Do not cross the border. Do not act provocatively. Do not take any unilateral actions that will complicate the border situation. China and India agree to continue to resolve bilateral issues through dialogue and consultation and make efforts to ease the tension and maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas.